Okay, good morning. We'll go ahead and get started. And uh, we've got another, good morning guys, we've got another uh, guest speaker for you this morning. I will let Lexi introduce him here in just a minute. I want to take a, a second just to remind you that next week our food drive is going to be starting, sponsored by Stuco. And I just want to encourage you to participate in that. Those canned goods and all that stuff goes to our food pantry here in Inman, and it's really important for our community to have that. So I want to encourage you to participate in that. Uh, you've also probably noticed some of the signs around the building. I want to say thank you to the cheerleaders for that, uh, just boosting our school spirit this week as we continue to uh, support our football team as they move through the playoffs. So thank you, cheerleaders, for that. All right. Um, again, I strongly encourage you to participate in the food drive. There's a lot of people counting on the food that we bring in, and it's just a really good thing to do. I sent out an email, and it has a list of foods that people are needing right now, and so if you're thinking about bringing stuff, take a look at that. Um, okay. Tyler Gordon is a 2017 graduate of Inman High School. Tyler was active throughout school, predominantly in football and track and field. He took Firefighter 1 and EMT classes half days while at Inman High School through Senateville 155 now known as Excel and CTE. He decided to pursue his career in EMT and paramedic. After obtaining an EMT certificate, he volunteered at Lindsbrook EMS for approximately eight months before beginning a full-time job at Reno County EMS as an EMT in July of 2018. Tyler graduated paramedic school December of 2020 and has since been a full-time paramedic with Reno County EMS since. Good morning, guys. Tyler, nice to see you uh, try to go over my journey a little bit to uh, paramedic. Uh, not super interesting. I'm trying to make it to get into philosophy up here. Uh, I'm here to some of the my head. Uh, so growing up, I attended here. I came here from Arlington um, in fourth grade. Uh, I attended all the way to senior year, um, where I graduated in 2017. Uh, had some fun throughout that time. Uh, went to track, uh, state track. Uh, with Coach Parsons, Coach Jackson, um, the 4x18. Um, so that was pretty fun. Uh, loved doing that. Um, found some love for weightlifting as well. Uh, sorry, can everyone hear me now? All right, my bad. Um, also found a love for weightlifting. Um, kind of my piece there. Um, can I go over my support system? It's pretty important to me. Um, my mom and dad uh, have been a huge support system of mine. Um, they've been great to me. Um, I've always supported me in whatever I do. Um, I'm very thankful to them. Um, I encourage you guys that if you have parents that you're close to, um, make sure you thank them and are encouraging to them as well. Um, other than that, uh, my brother and sister up there, uh, my sister in the wedding dress, um, and my brother-in-law, Chase Sneed, as well as my brother in the blue, and my sister-in-law, Jenna, uh, going to be an uncle soon here in may -ish, I think. So I'll be great. Um, the Mikulski clan, um, they've been really supportive to me as I'm dating their daughter, Micah. Uh, sorry, Brant, <laughs> you use that photo. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> um, other than that, my preceptor up there, that's uh, Ryan Siders. Uh, he helped me throughout my field internship. Um, he was a great support system. He's a really knowledgeable guy. Um, and really helped me become the paramedic man today. So I'm really thankful for him. Um, and down in that right corner, um, those are some of the paramedics I work with. Not all of them are in there, and this is Zach. Um, but that's at one of my friend's cold wedding. He's a paramedic. So uh, I've been a huge support system, making sure that I stay on track and be the best I can be. So really happy to have them around. Uh, I couldn't put everybody in here, but put some important ones in there. Um, we'll go over what I did in high school. So um, I took Fire 1 EMP, uh, as she had mentioned. Um, I took it through Senate Bill 155. Uh, it's now known as Excel and CTE. So uh, if you have questions, get some with Mr. Pond still, or you can email me, um, and I'll give you some more information on that. But uh, basically, they pay for your EMT and your Fire One if they get through high school, I believe. Um, so it's a pretty good opportunity. Um, kind of gets you out of high school. I took my Fire Fire One my first semester, um, taking a couple days a week. Uh, got me out of high school, so I can't complain too much. Um, I was eager to get out, which is what it is. But, uh, and I took my EMT my second semester, again, taking a couple classes. Um, 
I kind of took got out of Mr. Kearley's class a little early. I'm sure he loved me for that. Uh, but other than that, had some fun throughout that. Had a lot of learning experiences. Don't really have any pictures of my EMT, but for me and my fire view. It uh, completely paid for by Senate Bill other than books, so I did have to pay for my books, but that's a pretty minor cost when they're paying for your entire schooling, so I really appreciate that. Uh, so kind of about paramedic school and what I am now. Uh, so paramedic school teaches you to go from base level knowledge, so basic life support as an EMT, uh, it kind of teaches you to go to advanced skills and procedures as a paramedic, uh, doing adequate assessments to make sure you treat uh, your patients appropriately and are doing what's best for your patient. So some of those skills that we learn um, can go from airway. Um, we're able to uh, manage people's airways with oxygen, airway adjuncts, things to keep people's airway open. We can breathe for people, uh, innovate. Those are pretty advanced procedures there, but uh, some of the other things we do is cardiology. Uh, we do four leads and 12 leads where we take pictures of people's hearts uh, to determine the treatment outline and kind of go from there. So we kind of bring the ER to you which is pretty cool. Uh, some of the ways we can do that, uh, we have med admin, so as a paramedic, uh, kind of different from the EMT level, um, they can do IVs, so most of you are familiar with IVs, so for the catheter in the vein. Uh, we can also do intraosseous, so IO, where we drill into the bone, we just place bone marrow, um, and we can give medications to that route, which is pretty cool. And I'll show you the drill we use for that in a later slide. So we also do IM, IN, and a few others that I just want to include. So. So paramedics are pre-approved to do about 50 medications uh, from uh, uh, medical control. So we have a medical director who's a physician, and uh, he kind of pre-approves the medications we can give, um, and we can give them for all kinds of things. Um, most medications have multiple different things we can use them for. So a lot of cool things we can do. Uh, paramedics are also skilled just as EMTs, so we have that base level knowledge to do splinting, hemorrhage control, vitals. Um, we can do anything from minor to severe. So it's pretty fun piece. Uh, field requirements, so in paramedic school, uh, I'll kind of go over the last two semesters of paramedic school, um, the fun things. Uh, in clinicals, we're required to have a bare minimum of 320 clinical hours. So that can range anywhere from the ICU, which is the intensive care unit, to the PICU, which is the pediatric intensive care unit, ER, uh, operating room, and we kind of get to learn our skills there, um, follow some physicians, some nurses, and really learn some really educational things from some really great providers that are doing miracles in the hospitals. Um, so they're pretty awesome people. That's great experiences there. Um, for field internship, um, that's where you're working as a paramedic with a uh, skilled paramedic that has been in the field for at least two years. And that's where my preceptor was, uh, Ryan. Uh, you have to complete 528 hours um, I was working a full 24 hours as a EMT, and then I was working my full 24 on FI. So I was working 48 hours on and 24 hours off. So I got pretty taxed out through that. A uh, little bit of burnout, but kind of regained my love for it throughout um, as a paramedic. So in paramedic school, there's a total of 10 mod exams. Um, those consist of two computer exams and a written, uh, and then also a hands-on portion typically. Um, they kind of vary throughout the year, but uh, they're contingent on whether or not you pass or fail. Um, you must pass those in order to proceed in the program. So that can be from learning medications, making sure that you're adequate in patient assessment, um, trauma assessment, all those good things. Um, really important to being a good paramedic. Uh, but then you're on to your national test, which is a computer exam, um, which certifies you as a national registered paramedic. Um, and then we have the Kansas certificate, which you're required to have by each state. Um, Kansas is one of the few states um, there's like eight or something, don't quote me on that, uh, that require an associate's degree in order to be a paramedic. So hopefully we keep progressing to being uh, more medical professionals and not seeing as ambulance drivers. Okay? So. Throughout paramedic school, I had a lot of fun. Um, here are some pictures of my classmates. Um, here there in the middle is my instructor, Don Friesen, and Daylene Deck in the red on the far right, um, as well as our program coordinator, um, Cliff Moore in the back. Um, if you have questions, there's some great people to get the answers for. Um, if you see me passed out up there, um, turns out when I get stuck by IVs, I pass out and have basal vagal syncope. So I can stick you all day, but uh, when I get stuck, I pass out. So figured I'd show an embarrassing photo. Uh, me delivering a fake baby there. So uh, Gucci baby there in the left corner. Oh, the school mascot. So <laughs> sorry, Daylene. 
Uh, my life as a paramedic, I'm a full-time paramedic at Reno County EMS, um, where I work 24 hours on, 48 off. Uh, I'm also a PRN lab assistant, I just started that. Uh, I'm also a CSL for college now. Uh, kind of getting my feet in there, putting there, sorry. Uh, you know, 24 hours of call to drop at any time, regardless if you're sleeping, eating, whatever you're doing, call to drop, um, and you're required to go to that call, whatever the emergency may be. So we typically run approximately five to 10 calls per cup, give or take. Uh, on a good day, you'll run fewer than that. On a really bad day, you may run 10, 15. So it just depends on the day. We can't predict what calls we get. Uh, we literally get called for everything, um, heart problems, breathing problems, diabetic problems, falls, cardiac arrest, um, you name it, we get called for it. Uh, and we're expected to be able to provide care to whoever falls. So, uh, I'm constantly on my toes, always learning new things. Um, I'm always surprised every shift by something I've seen. So it's always a great learning experience. Um, a good adrenaline rush. Um, some of the things that I really enjoy as a paramedic, um, I get to treat the elderly. Um, they have great stories. They're a complex population because you really have to guide people into the medication to make sure there's no polypharmacy going on. Uh, really make sure that we get adequate care. As well as pediatric patients. Um, again, they're a really vulnerable population just making sure that you provide the best care for them by doing adequate assessment, making sure you're asking questions, doing good physical exam, things like that. So they can also be pretty taxing mentally and physically. Um, my office as a paramedic, kind of going to as what it is. Uh, pretty tight quarters in there. Um, we try to do a lot of our uh, interventions when we can on scene in your house. So we can do most of the stuff that we do as paramedics in your living room. Um, but this is where we transport you yeah, security. So in you know, that lower left corner, that's our innovation. Um, that's, you see a tube going through the mobile cord into the trachea. Um, that's our video over scope, pretty cool technology. Um, there's the IO drill that I was talking about earlier. Um, and there's some of our medications, our monitors. Um, and that picture was supposed to show our display screen for driving with all of our lights and stuff, but they got cut out for some reason. Nothing too crazy there. That's about all I got. Um, hopefully, there's some questions and not. Let's get it here so we can pick it up on the uh, broadcast. So, because you completed the um, EMT and you said the fire? Fire one, yeah. Fire one. Which is fire, fire year. one. Yeah. Okay, so you did that your senior year of high school. So, then how long was EMT? Did you go directly to EMT school from high school? So I, I went to EMT in my senior year. Um, that was the actual EMT class, um, and then I get certified after that. All right, then, then you went to paramedic. Yeah, I went to paramedic school. So you have this so three recs out, so A and B, um, and a few other genetics. So we'll on that. We like, talked some of those better than I do. Um, but then we go on to paramedic, which is approximately 17 month course, uh, good two years worth of knowledge to try and fit into a small box. So. So then from high school you took your prereqs at HCC? Yeah, everything I did I went through HCC. Um, and how long did that take you? Um, I don't know. I don't have a great um, estimate on that. I, I took individual courses just so that way I could take it at my pace. So I took a little longer than some people would take, but uh, yeah, I think it was an exact time. And then you got into the 17 month paramedic school? Paramedic school, yep. Hand up. Here, let me get out here so we can so we can pick it up. We'll be okay. No problems. Um, what's the worst call you've been on? So I already told this response, so I knew this question was going to happen. So I tried to answer it in a professional setting. Uh, I won't really go into details on what my work call is, but uh, really anything that involves pediatric patients uh, can be really taxing, uh, kind of suck at times. You see a lot of death and dying, um, it's kind of just part of the job. Uh, so just making sure you have good coping mechanisms, good support systems to get you through that and make sure uh, you're doing what's best for your patient at all times. Uh, we'll kind of keep you on track, so I won't get into too much detail with that. Thanks. Uh, Tyler, to follow up on that, so you obviously had a lot of skill training Mm -hmm. you know, for what you have to do. Yeah. 
how do you prepare yourself, kind of what you're just talking about mentally, for some of those situations that you may walk into because you have to remain calm when everybody else is probably emotionally at, all over the place? That's a great question. Um, so our instructor kind of talks about duck on water syndrome, um, remaining calm on the surface even if you're running a million times a minute in the, in the head, um, just making sure you remain calm to that family, um, to that patient, um, and just making sure that you're relying on your skills and your base level knowledge to adequately treat that patient, um, regardless of the situation, no matter how stressed you are, um, just being that professional that everyone needs. So, pretty cool. Tough to do at times. You've never seen before. Um, I started EMS at a pretty young age. Um, I think I was 18, 19. Uh, that was my first EMT job. And so I'm going into the elderly population's calls and being expected to know what's going on. So. Uh, Sometimes you don't know, and sometimes you got to acknowledge that and uh, do what you can to um, treat the underlying symptoms, things like that, and just do what's best for your patient. And, you know, so. Other questions? All right, let's give Tyler a hand. Thank you for sharing today.